All right, welcome everyone. This is Shadow Drake. So we're gonna. This, this is gonna be a quick little blurb. Uh, this is gonna be talking about the open loop phase change cooling system. Well, partially open loop, and part of it is a closed loop that I use that I'm using in the current Vulcan playthrough. Now, this is a slight spoiler, so if I have not gotten to that part, but just ignore everything else. But um, from where I am, I basically completed the system. And that part is essentially, it, it's comprised of essentially three systems, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, number one is the open cycle cooler, which is basically that large power vent, those yellow pipes, and then that, that uh, liquid pipe, the volume pump, the counter flow, and you see that that tank system up there. Not, not, not the one with the canister filler, but just, just, just the loop on the counter flow. That's the open cycle cooler. The primary purpose for that is to cool down my high temperature thermal storage so that it stays at a low enough temperature for the phase change device to work. The second part of the system are the two thermal tanks storage. So then you have the volatiles and the CO2. Now, do you need volatiles or CO2 specifically? Not really. It's just that for the purpose of the brutal start, I needed to separate my gases to have the volatiles so that I can, you know, mix it for fuel mix later. And the CO2, which is going to be the greenhouse and used to cool. And both of those are two completely separate temperature ranges. One is on the upper end, you know, basically roughly nighttime Vulcan. The other one is close to room temperature. And the last part of the system is actually the closed loop phase change system filled with pollutants. Now, before the Vulcan sun catches me and makes me unable to do uh, show it off, show off what's going on, uh, we'll start with the open loop cooler. Um, before I get to that, this volatiles tank, you know, that's basically my hot thermal storage. That needs to stay cool enough so that pollutants can condense. Um, the open cycle cooler, uh, well, the closed cycle heat exchange pumps uh, can only work so long as the pollutants is below 152 Celsius. So basically that means that this tank of volatiles needs to be below 152 in order for my whole system to work and keep working. Now what the open cycle cooler is, that large power vent is drawing Vulcan atmosphere and you see there are pollutants in there. It's pressurizing them in this pipe and it's generating liquid pollutants. This liquid pollutants is then what is going to be used to cool down my volatiles tank because the liquid pollutants get fed out through a condensation valve to this liquid pipe network. And as you can see, high, high volume, low pressure, it evaporates and actually cools down pretty well. So, you know, 72 Celsius liquid pollutants is getting fed through the counterflow. Uh, the counterflow, as you can see, um, since the sun is coming up, the the cooling rate is dropping. But, it, you know, it does close to 10 kilojoules, maybe 10 to 12 kilojoules at night while it's running. And then out the other end is another liquid pipe with a passive liquid inlet that just allows the excess pressure to escape and for the liquid pollutants to evaporate and escape. So that's the open cycle part of the system. And it is purely there to cool this volatiles tank so that it stays uh, below the temperature for my heat exchange, my phase change system here, the condensation chamber, evap chamber, and counterflow. It's just there to allow it to function. Now on the other end, I have some CO2 that is basically being cooled down to room temperature. And this, this is what's going to be used for filling up my greenhouse, for controlling my temperature. Uh, and also for cooling down the hot steam I will eventually be making with my H2 combustor. Now, this closed loop phase change system, what it seeks to do, and based on its setting, I have it set to 3000 kPa to increase its speed of evaporation. Uh, 3 megapascals, or 3000 kPa, corresponds to roughly negative 20 Celsius pollutants. Now, that's kind of a problem and kind of not a problem. The problem would be is if for some reason it ever gets that far. You know, I'm going to freeze my plants and kill just about everything. The kind of a not of a problem is that it, as, as, of, as of this moment, as of this video, that system is made to keep constantly cooling CO2 
because it's going to be taking in heat from the Vulcan sun, heat from more CO2 being pushed in, and eventually heat from cooling down steam and water down to drinkable temperatures. So there's a huge heat load being pushed into my CO2 tank. And so having this lower will actually help to cool it down a little bit faster. Now, if this was just going to be a passive system to just get it down to temperature, the ideal setting that I should put is about, you know, three and a half megapascals. That way it'll cool it down and it won't cool down any further. But as it is, I need a little extra cooling, so that's why it's set to lower. But now, what that means is you see that I have a latent heat of 10 kilojoules. So that's a lot of thermal energy that is being pulled from the CO2 tank. And if you look at the condensation side, that's a lot of energy that's being dumped into the hot volatiles. So you see my system, in a sense, um, is pulling heat from the CO2, pushing it to the volatiles. And then at night, the volatiles is getting cooled by an open loop cooler. You know, that's, that's the gist of my setup. Now, all of this is essentially a tier two system because I am using tier two pipe bender to get to the counter flow and the large power vents. Does it need to be a strictly tier two system? Uh, no, it does not. This is more for like a mid game Vulcan solution setup. And that's basically what I rushed to build within the first couple parts. A mid game setup that is not going to require much fine tuning or messing with me. It's just more build it and let it, you know, let it do what it's supposed to do. Now, if you're, I, I've had some videos about an early game solution. Most of them could be basically the phase change devices without the counter flow. Uh, the limitations on that is that. Uh, recall that if you divide the latent heat by the specific heat, that's the most temperature change you can have from uh, the gas. If it's condensing at a certain point, the lowest it can be evaporate will be that number. For pollutants, that's about 80 degrees. So just, you know, if I am condensing 130 degrees Celsius liquid pollutants, you know, take away 80 degrees, the coldest I can ever expect to be is 50 Celsius which 50 Celsius is still not, yeah, it's not good for climate control. However, it is good for either another uh, phase change heat pump system or to tie it as a common for all of your atmospheric ACs and let them push heat up. Anyways, so that's basically my system. But this, this system was made to be expandable. And what I mean by that is, you know, I'm using small insulated tanks. So what I could do is I could build a large insulated tank and store a massive amount of volatiles or CO2 at the respective temps. So that's one way the system can be expanded upon. Additionally, another way it can be expanded on is I can just basically copy the heat pumps like that. And so long as space permits, I can copy it down so that I can move more energy from one end to the other. Additionally, as far as cooling towers go, you know, I can co I can duplicate that cooling tower setup with the condensation valve, counter flow, and, and volume pump setups over there and expand them out so that I can remove more heat at night. So I created this in such a way to try to be able to expand it. So, yeah. Make, make do with different parts as you will. And again, uh... Tier 1 system is completely viable, but it's just going to have different engineering challenges because you're going to have different situations where some parts are not going to work right. Anyways, thank you for your time. Hope to see you back in Mars or Vulcan, and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.